Hi, Mike Zalkowski here, Bay City, Michigan. I'm down here at the North American Decoy Collector Show. I'm a decoy carver. I'm here to put on demonstrations and show you how it's done. It's easy. Uh, you just got to be patient. This will be a, a swimming teal, probably a drake. Got a little ways to go, but that's a good start. This, this is made to go in the water. It's supposed to be otted over. Uh, we use white cedar for bodies and basically uh, basswood or pine for heads. This is used like this to form the decoys, take off all the pieces you don't want, take off all the parts that don't look like a duck. Like I say, good tools. Now I manufacture a set of tools that kind of makes everything pretty cool. These are Michigan made feather stamps. I use these to stamp feathers in the decoys to make painting a little better. What we do is lay this on here, tap it. You don't have to hit it hard. Actually puts, impregnates that feather stamp in there. I didn't invent this. One of our most famous decoy carvers in Michigan came up with this. So when you paint over it, it gives you a 3D effect and it makes it easy for a poor painter like me to get by by dry brushing it. Like I say, it's a hundred year old process that a man made famous and I'm just carrying on the tradition. A lot of ways to get into this. There's a place called the Duck Blind. They'll sell kits that give you a head, a blanked out head and a body, and you can take it from there. What I use is right here. Sure form round, a flat, a pocket plane, and of course my draw knife. The, the hardest thing about decoys is just deciding you're gonna do it. And don't be afraid. You cannot be wrong. Use your eye to make what you think a duck should look like. And if it doesn't right off bat, you make another one. I don't really sell decoys. I make decoys because I love to make decoys. And I have a 23 year old son at home that loves to hunt over them. And the reward out of it is just unbelievable. You go and hunt over a rig of your own decoys, there's nothing better to see the ducks come in fooled by what you made. Okay, I'm gonna pass this off to you and Pat Gregory for painting. My name is Pat Gregory. I'm a decoy carver from Bloomington, Illinois. Uh, Carved decoys is a hobby. I picked it up about 40 years ago. Today we're painting a pair of redhead decoys. And so let, let's talk a little bit about how do you get started in this? You know, if you're a duck hunter and you want to get started, a lot of people ask me about reference material. I, I think the best reference material I can recommend are the ducks themselves. And so I set myself a goal I want to carve a dozen redheads one year. Um, when we hunt redheads, I'll just I'll just take a lot of pictures. Um, I'll, I'll get cardboard, uh, like just standard cereal box cardboard, and I make patterns right from the actual the ducks themselves. Like all this paint I use, this is all out of the can Sher Sherwin Williams exterior latex. I don't want to have to special order specialized paint. I also use you know, some uh, tube acrylics for details. You don't have to have a lot of expensive artist brushes. This is a 58 cent chip brush I use. If you're gonna throw something in the water and hunt with it, you gotta seal it up good, right? So a good marine grade varnish, and then some kind of primer over it to accept paint. So a varnish, some primer, and then finished paint. This is a stippling technique where I'm taking the paint from my palette and I'm just kind of stippling it. I'm bouncing that brush around on the decoy. You know, just lay the paint on there. When do you stop? When my eye is satisfied, that's when I'll stop, okay? This is a, the dry brushing technique where you just add a little paint at a time, you know? You just keep building it. Not too tough to do, really. You gotta know something about the duck to be able to replicate it. So uh, you really gotta study the birds themselves. Uh, I do recommend I mean, if, you, if you're in an area that you've got local carvers, go visit them. For me, one of the reasons, why would you make your own decoys? For me, in the fall, when I throw this thing out in the water and I have a 
spread of redhead decoys out that I made, and the redheads come into them in the morning, and and you know it's just for me that's the ultimate experience is to see that my decoys went out in the water and did their job. You know that they they lured um, ducks within gunshot, right? So keep in mind there's a whole community out there that really is anxious to help you get started. We're always looking for new people to get going in carving decoys, um, to answer your questions, to give you help and give you direction. So, you know, don't be scared to get out and, and access that. Uh, I'm Pat Gregory, and stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors.